Uh, hi, Amanda. Oh, hey, Kelly. How are you today? Yeah, so you just moved in today, right? If you need anything, feel free to ask. I appreciate that. You're a single mom, aren't you? What? No, I'm not a single mom. It's fine, no need to be shy about it. Being a single mom is tough, with no time and little money, right? But I'm really not a single mom. No need to hide it. There are so many single moms nowadays. And so what if I were? Well, you see, I have a husband and kids, and we're a happy family. My husband is a project leader now, and he makes a great salary. Because we have financial security, we also have peace of mind. Are you saying I don't have peace of mind? Yeah, you always look so tired when I see you, Amanda. I'm not tired, though, and it's not like I'm struggling financially. Uh, come on, Amanda, who are you kidding? We all know you don't have money. A single mom working part-time, right? I do work, yes. See, you have to work just to make ends meet. On the other hand, I don't even need to work because my husband earns enough for us. That's really rude, you know. Rude? How so? I'm just stating the facts. Well, I have a husband and I make enough to raise my kids just fine. Oh, stop pretending. You know you don't make enough to live on. You know what that's called? Being poor. I've had enough of this. You're being incredibly rude, Kelly. Maybe I just won't reply to you anymore. Hold on a minute. What is it? We're neighbors now. Why don't we have a little party? I'll pay for it, of course. I know you're a single mom and probably can't afford it. No, thanks. What? I was just trying to have some fun together. Let me be blunt. Are you just trying to make fun of me and my family? Oh, you caught on, huh? I can't listen to this anymore. My name is Amanda. Unfortunately, there's a woman named Kelly in my apartment complex who constantly tries to one-up me without knowing anything about my life. No matter how many times I tell her I'm not a single mom, she doesn't believe me. And these kinds of exchanges over text have become exhausting. More so than work or parenting. A few months later. Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Are you there? What? You finally replied. What's up? Are you just super busy with work and couldn't get back to me? Yeah, something like that. What do you want? I don't have much time, so can you make it quick? Busy, huh? Oh, poor thing. That's what happens when you're struggling financially. But anyway, let's put that aside. We live in the same building, so it's okay to check in once in a while, right? I'm not interested in any updates, and I definitely don't have time to listen. Didn't I say make it quick? Come on, don't be so cold. This won't take long. Guess what? I'm moving. Oh, that's great. Finally, I won't have to deal with you anymore. It's the best news I've heard all day. So let's cut ties. Goodbye. Oh, don't be like that. I don't want to lose touch with you. I actually like you in a way. I really don't care how you mean that. You just want to keep a connection so you can keep bothering me, right? Well, yeah, that's part of it. You should really work on that terrible personality of yours. Guess where I'm moving to? I'm not asking and I don't care. I don't want to know where you're moving, Kelly. Can't you show a little excitement? It's boring if you don't. I'm moving to a well-known high-rise in the city on the 30th floor. I bet you'll never be able to afford a place like that, Amanda. I mean, you're probably barely getting by in that apartment, right? Yeah, yeah, say whatever you want. So Kelly was moving out of our apartment complex and into a high-rise. I thought I would finally be free from her annoying texts, but I was wrong. Even after moving, Kelly continued to try to one-up me. Three months later. Amanda, long time no see. What? You're moved out already, so why are you still bothering me? I thought I'd show you the night view from my penthouse and then high rise. No thanks, I'm not interested at all. You're just jealous, aren't you? Not in the slightest. Come on, you're totally jealous. You shouldn't marry someone like my husband who makes good money. Then you could live a better life. Seriously, my life is amazing. Wanna come over sometime? Oh, but the place is probably too high class for you. Kelly, enough with the insults already. But since you're so curious, I'll tell you something. My apartment is on the 40th floor of that high rise. What? What are you talking about? What's wrong? Can't even read a simple text anymore? How could someone like you, who's supposedly broke, live on the 40th floor? That's the top floor. I've told you over and over, I'm not a single mom and I'm not broke. Oh, and by the way, I'm a successful comic artist. The other apartment was just for my kids to play in. The high rise is where we actually live. That's a lie, right? Now that you mention that, I didn't see you much back when you lived in the old apartment. That's because I was mostly at the high rise. We had a nanny taking care of the kids at the other place while I worked. So that apartment was just a playroom? Basically, yes. Why? How could someone like you even afford a high rise apartment? 
Didn't you listen to anything I said before? Are you just too dumb to understand? Can't even read properly? Even if you say you're a comic artist, it's probably just some unpopular stuff, right? You don't even have a husband. You must be drowning in mortgage debt, pretending to be rich. My husband is actually the CEO of the company your husband works for. We bought the apartment in cash. He's been away on business, which is why you didn't see him before. That's why we never crossed paths. Oh, and the comic I draw? It's the big hit about demons that's everywhere right now. No way! You mean the one that's super popular with kids? I see that stuff all over the stores. Ding ding! Even you figure that out. Is that really true? I can't believe it. It's true. Want to see the original art? No, that's okay. But I mean, could I maybe get a signed copy? I can sign anything you want. No, that's not what I meant. Oh, by the way, you're not actually living on the thirtieth floor, right? What? You're on the fifteenth floor, aren't you? How do you know that? I saw you picking up your packages the other day, and you were using the key for the fifteenth floor lockers. <gasps> When did you? Fine, whatever. Yes. So what? Maybe it's time to stop pretending. Hey, Amanda, can I come over and see the view from the fortieth floor? Let's hang out sometime. Absolutely not. Why? We've known each other since the old place. I'm about to have dinner with my husband and kids. What? I want to come too. Seriously? After everything you've said? <laughs> no way. Later on. Kelly kept trying to get close to me, sending me messages and invitations to fancy dinners, but I turned her down every time. Eventually, it got so annoying that I blocked her on WhatsApp. Now I'm enjoying a peaceful life with my husband and kids. Let this be a lesson, Kelly. Stop trying to one-up people based on false assumptions. Hey, do you want to grab lunch sometime next week? Sorry, I'm already booked next week, so I can't make it. What are you doing, Lucy? You always ask for every little detail, don't you? Well, I'm curious. I'm going on a trip. With who? With some mom friends and their families. What? I want to come too. It's too late. We've already bought the tickets. Tickets? Does that mean you're flying somewhere? Yes, we are. Where are you going? I really want to come. We're going to Hawaii. No way! That sounds amazing. Can't you add me at the last minute? It's impossible. We booked more than just the flights. Really? Where else are you going? Look, it's not happening. Okay, you can't come, Lucy. But I want to go. I said it's not possible. Come on, let's hang out now. I can't. My son's about to get home. Please, Maya, take me with you. I'm not the one organizing this trip, and I can't just add people. Then who should I talk to? It's not about who to ask. The number of people is limited, so it's a no. Got it? You're so mean. I really wanted to go. You can go on another trip with a different group next time. Promise? I'll think about it, but it depends on everyone's schedule. Fine. Three days later. So about that trip we talked about, has anyone invited me yet? No, no one's invited you. Why not? We talked about going. We did, but it was only three days ago. You're always so slow to get things done. Well, I have another trip before that, and I need to get ready for it. I can't even think about planning the next trip right now. Ugh, you're such a liar. Why are you saying that? Didn't I just explain everything to you? Didn't you get it? No, I didn't get it. Aren't you excited about our trip? I never said I wasn't. Yes, you did. Anyway, I can't plan the next trip so soon. The earliest would be three or four months from now. Ugh, that's way too long. Well, it's not like we can go on trips all the time. My husband has a schedule, and we need to consider the budget too. Right. I forgot your husband is just an employee, not a big shot like mine. Exactly. So we can't go on trips all the time. Fine. I'll organize the next trip myself. Do whatever you want. But like I said, it can't be for another three or four months. Then I'll just go without your family. That's fine. All right. It's settled. The next day. So you're going on this trip with three families, and they're all close friends, huh? I see. I was left out. You weren't left out. Didn't you say you had no interest in going abroad? That's why we didn't invite you. You could have at least asked. After you were so adamant about not wanting to travel abroad, it didn't make sense to ask. Then why didn't you just plan a domestic trip and invite me? Because everyone wanted to go overseas. Traveling domestic wasn't even on the table from the start. Ah, that's harsh. So what about the trip you planned without me? Are they going? They're all the same. No one can go right away. I figured. I actually wanted to go abroad too. Since when? Just recently. I had no idea. 
What are you planning to do there? Water sports or something? The main goal is to stay at a luxury hotel. A hotel? That's it? You're just going to stay there? It's a resort hotel. Fine, whatever. Talking to you just makes me angrier. Okay then, bye. The day of the trip to Hawaii. Lucy sent me a picture of a plane on WhatsApp. Are you going on a trip with your family too, Lucy? Yep. That's great, I'm happy for you. I had to pull some strings with my husband's work, but we're flying overseas. That's great, have fun. Oh, I will. We're staying at a resort hotel too. That's a coincidence. Our trip has the same goal. Isn't it? We're traveling on the same day too. Yeah, I guess that's true. Anyway, see you later, Malia. Six hours later. We've arrived at the hotel. That was fast. I just got to the airport. We took an earlier flight. Wait, are you somewhere near Hawaii? We're in Hawaii. Really? You're staying at the same place? Why is that a problem? Not a problem, but I thought you'd pick a different spot. Well, I wouldn't be here if you had invited me in the first place. I didn't think you wanted to come. Now I'm going to enjoy this resort hotel. After arriving at the hotel, I thought I saw someone who looked like Lucy near the pool. Hey, don't tell me you're at the premier resort hotel. Yep, overseas resort hotels are the best. What? I heard you were coming here, so I booked a room. Seriously, the same hotel? Got a problem with that? No, not really. I told at the front desk that I was a family friend of yours and they let us in right away. You said that? Didn't you make a reservation? No, I thought being your family friend would be enough. No need for a reservation. Now one of our families might not get a room. That's the plan. What? I came all this way for that reason. Ugh, that's low. Whose fault is that? Just leave. No way. My husband's vacation days would go to waste. You need to leave the hotel right now. Not a chance. I've already checked in. Fine, we'll just get another room then. Sounds good. What about dinner? We got the restaurant tickets with our package. So we're having dinner together, I guess. Yep. Let's at least enjoy dinner peacefully. Sure, sounds good. Three hours later. Oh yeah, by the way, this hotel is having a costume party tonight. So instead of formal dress, head to the first floor, buy a costume, and then come to the event. Wait, seriously? Yeah, didn't you know? We came here specifically for the costume party. I had no idea. I'm gonna check it out right now. Alright, see you later then. 30 minutes later. Maya, where are you? I'm on the second floor, near the window with the night view, enjoying some wine. I'm heading to the second floor, but where's the staircase? I looked down for the second floor and spotted Lucy and her two friends dressed as vampire. They stood out immediately. Everyone else was in elegant formal wear, so people were laughing at Lucy and her friends. Hey, why is there anyone else in costume? Did we go to the wrong place? Everyone's in costume. Did you go to the wrong venue? Are we supposed to be at the Stanish Garden restaurant? Yep, that's the one. But where are you, Maya? I can't find the stairs. We might not see each other again. What do you mean? Because you're trespassing. Actually, I didn't pay to come to this hotel. I want a raffle for a stay here. The hotel requires all guests to register their names beforehand. It seems you entered by claiming to be my friend, but the name Maya wasn't on the guest list. Plus, this hotel requires prepayment. So Lucy, you're technically trespassing. What? Later. The police arrived to arrest Lucy and her friends. It happened because I explained everything to the front desk. Lucy and her friends were taken to the police station, questioned for hours, and ended up with a bill close to $10,000 for fines, hotel fees, and damages. The next day, a big photo of them in costume was splashed across the newspapers. The headline read, Tourists caught dressed as vampire in a luxury hotel. After Lucy was gone, we spent the next two days thoroughly enjoying the resort hotel. Mary, Mary, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Whoa, slow down, Hannah. What happened? It's over. I did something really, really bad. What? I feel so awful. I don't know how I can face everyone. Just take a deep breath and tell me what's going on. What happened? You're scaring me a little. Thank you. Well, I was out shopping and someone snatched my bag. My purse and everything got stolen. <laughs> I mean, what else can I do but laugh at this point? Wait, what? You need to be calling the police, not me. Did you file a report? Yeah, I already did that. This is serious, Hannah. Were there any credit cards in there? You need to cancel them ASAP before someone starts charging things. 
No, nothing like that. It's not my usual bag. It was just my tote. Wait, what? You were carrying cash in your tote? Yeah, but it wasn't my personal money. It was the vacation fund. <gasps> Are you serious? I'm serious. They said it's unlikely I'll get it back. There was $3,000 in there. They don't think I'll see it again. Wait, that was the money we saved for the trip to Vegas, wasn't it? That was our vacation fund. I'm so, so sorry. I don't even know what to say to everyone. Hold on, no one's going to be mad at you over this. The person who stole it is at fault, not you, Hannah. Thank you. But why did you have the money in your purse? Wasn't it in the usual collection envelope? The envelope tore and I didn't want to carry the cash around loose, so I put it in my other wallet temporarily. Got it. I'll let the other moms know what happened. I'm sure they'll understand. I really appreciate it. We'll get through this. For now, let's cancel the hotel reservations just in case. The trip will probably be off anyway. Okay. I'll set up a group chat on WhatsApp or something, and we can all talk about it there. Can you join in later? Yeah, I can do that. Just try to stay calm and don't beat yourself up too much. I'll handle the rest, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. We've got each other's backs, right? I'll be in touch soon. A few weeks later. Mary, I really messed up. Can I talk to you about something? I need advice. What happened? It's about the trip. I completely forgot to cancel it. Wait, what? You didn't cancel? Does that mean there's a cancellation fee? Yeah. Why didn't you cancel right away? How did this happen? I got busy and it just <laughs> slipped my mind. What are we supposed to do now? The other moms the other moms probably think the trip is already canceled. So here's the thing. What if we just go on the trip anyway? Excuse me? I mean, we all planned and made time for this, right? Everyone was looking forward to it. Look, I know it's my fault that it's messed up, but isn't there any way we can still go? It's not that simple. The money we saved is gone, and we'd have to come up with new money for the trip. Plus, paying for everything in one go was hard enough the first time. This isn't just a small problem. I get that, but it just feels like such a waste to cancel everything now. Mm, I don't know. I'll tell everyone the truth in the group chat, okay? I just need you to back me up. Uh, what? I was really looking forward to this trip too. You know I live with my in-laws, right? This trip was supposed to be my stress relief from all that. If we don't go, I'll have to deal with my mother-in-law's comments again. I get it, but we can't assume everyone will be okay with this. Thanks. Also, I'll take over as the organizer, okay? That way I can manage things from here. Yes, please. Alright, let's chat in the group chat later. Thanks for everything, really. The day before the trip. Mary, can I talk to you? Sure, what's up? So you haven't sent out the trip details yet, right? The trip is tomorrow, isn't it? What? I sent them out days ago. I sent them in the group chat the day after we talked. Oh, really? I must have missed it. Sorry, I guess I was just worried because I didn't see anything. Wait, why should I send it to you? What do you mean? The trip details? Why would I send them to you? You're not coming. What? What are you talking about? We all agreed I'd be coming on this trip. That was for the last trip. You're not coming on this one, right? You weren't even planning to. What? We're already at the destination. Wait, what? Today's the first day of the trip. We're all here eating and walking around. Hold on. Why would you do that? Why would you leave me out? That's so mean. Mean? Who's the one who lied about losing the trip funds and spent it all on gambling? I saw you walking into that casino, you know. What? Yeah, I saw you use that money at the casino. I mean, I go to casinos sometimes, but I didn't use the trip funds. I wouldn't do that. I saw you take the money out of the collection envelope and put it in your purse. I even took a picture as a proof. Want me to send it to you? You followed me into the casino? I did, and you used that money to gamble. I was hoping it wasn't true, but it is. So you knew the whole time? All those desperate texts you sent me? I was sitting outside the casino when you sent them. Maybe you were really stressed, but that doesn't excuse what you did. You looked pretty upset when you left the casino, too. You tricked me? Who tricked who here? Thanks to you, we got the money back, and now we can cover the cost of our trip. Wait, what? You got the money back? How? Your mother-in-law covered it for us. My mother-in-law did? Yeah, I explained everything to her, and she withdrew the money and handed it over right away. Thanks to her, we were able to plan a new trip, and we're staying at an even better hotel than we originally planned. Last-minute deals can be amazing. We even got a great room at a high-end hotel for a bargain. So what about the trip I booked? Didn't you cancel it? No, I didn't! What should I do? If I cancel now, I have to pay a cancellation fee. Yeah, it might be the full amount. 
if you had cancelled earlier, you'd only have to pay later, but now the bill's coming. What should I do? And my mother-in-law knows about all this, right? This is so weird. I saw her today and she didn't say anything. She even seemed to be in a good mood. Well, she probably didn't say anything because she's planning to talk about your divorce on the day of our trip. What? Oh, and your husband knows too. He came by to apologize. <gasps> no way. Am I really getting divorced? That's something you'll have to work out with them. But yeah, it looks like you're in for a rough time. You're getting divorced, your mother-in-law wants her money back, and you'll have to pay the cancellation fees. But at least pay the cancellation fees for me. You brought this on yourself. You used the money and still wanted to go on the trip, so it's easy to guess why you didn't cancel on time. How did you know that? Just a hunch, but it doesn't really matter to us now. We're done here. You're on your own. Please don't leave me hanging. We're all friends, right? Help me out. Nope, I don't want to have anything more to do with you. Just get that divorce and move on, please. Epilogue. Hannah's husband served her divorce papers and she was kicked out of the house. After that, her mother-in-law demanded repayment through a lawyer. And the hotel sent her a bill for the cancellation fees, leaving her in a really tight spot. As of now, Hannah has moved back in with her parents and is desperately trying to find a job to pay off her debts. In that state, there's no way she can afford to gamble anymore. Meanwhile, we enjoyed our trip, relieved all our stress, and ended up making some unforgettable memories.